there's a very, very good reason for me doing this video. And it's because I've just done a little segment on the radio, totally unexpected. I got called very late today by, by BBC Radio 5 Live to go and appear on their show, which was, hold on. Uh, which was the Monday Night Club, Five Live Sport, the Monday Night, the Monday Night Club, and I wasn't quite hijacked on it. It wasn't quite that, but it just got me thinking about the perception of West Ham outside of West Ham and the perception of David Moyes. And it wasn't that I was asked to explain myself, but I, I, I was sort of, I was sort of lured into it a little bit. Let, let, let's put it that way. So first of all, they started asking me about um, Mohamed Kadus, about um, West Ham's attacking play and about, about what a great player we've got on our hands. Now, of course, you all might know my opinions on it. I've done two videos over the last uh, 24 hours about the, about the player. Wonderful player, great player, right? You know, so I told them everything that I've, I've already spoken about and that I'm sure you all agree with me on. And then they, start, so they started talking about this attacking style of play with David Boys. Now, I was really pleased that Geo yesterday morning at the same time when I was uploading a video had also uploaded a video which he discussed with Charlie where he just thought it was more Moyes ball he didn't think there was an attacking style of play I, I, I didn't either as you know I just thought we, we counter-attacked on three occasions really well just to reiterate just in case you're new to the channel I don't mind counter-attacking football I prefer counter-attacking football to massively possession-based football I really enjoyed the football under Alan Pardew for example, right? So, but I just wanted to make the point that they were all counter-attacks and there's this perception, I think, that maybe David Moyes has changed the style of football. So I just said on the radio that I thought it was counter-attacking football, but it was a lot more effective. I think because of the way he's changed James Ward-Prowse, I think that's helped. Uh, I think moving Thomas Suchek's helped. It's Lucas Pakatar getting Emerson involved. All of these things have gone towards helping. We talked a little bit about the Fulham result, and then, of course, they hit me with it. What's the fans' perception of David Moyes? And it was basically a case of, well, hold on, you're doing all, you're doing all right in the league at the moment. You're doing all right in Europe. What's, what's the frustration with David Moyes? So I basically went on to explain, as well as I could, bearing in mind you're very aware when you're doing that radio stuff, that you're on limited time. It doesn't matter here on YouTube if I prattle on if i intend to do a 10 minute video and it lasts for 15 minutes it doesn't matter it doesn't there's no one no one's going to tell me off there's no one in my ear there's i'm, I'm, I'm aware i'm not going to be cut off so i'm trying to explain myself um about david moyes and why david moyes has been under pressure and i was very very aware when i was explaining myself that i might have sounded like a bit of an entitled west ham fan bearing in mind Three seasons in Europe, the trophy. And this is, this is the perception from the outside, of course. But it's not just a perception from the outside. It is also the truth, isn't it? We, we have actually won a trophy. We have had three seasons in Europe. Um, we are sort of eighth in the league. We are in the last 16 of Europe. And so I was just explaining maybe some of the things that, that David Moyes is, is frustrating for. You know, I explained some of the tactics, explained some of the... Some, you know, some examples that, we, you know, we, we can often not go for games, even if it's, you know, against sort of lesser teams, that he's not great at bringing young players through. He's not great at rotating the squad. Um, I tried to explain it as best as I could, but I was very, very aware as I was explaining it to these. And there was like a panel of them, was like a panel of people. It was I think I was talking to four or five people on this show. And I was very aware that I, I wasn't speaking to a receptive audience. And then one of them sort of hit me with it and hit me with a comment. She said, well, you know what? Seventh in the league. Fortunately, I was pleased because Shea Given corrected her and said, I think it's eighth, which, of course, it is. You know, last 16 in Europe, what more do you want? And that's the perception, is it? What more do you want? What possibly, what else could David Moyes do? I did try to explain that, look, it's, it's not a case of, of it's being West Ham historically when you're going to try and up the stadium capacity to 66,000, you probably want some entertaining football to do it. I explained that he'd spent a lot of money. I explained about the youth team. I explained all of that. But still, not it was an argument, but I think if it was an argument, I think I'd have lost it. That, that, that's the truth of the matter. I, I don't think, you know what, I think, I think there was no knockout blow, but I think, I think they probably would have won on points on that one. Because it is very hard to make the case that David Moyes isn't doing well. 
Of course, he can be frustrating, but he's doing well. He, he's won a trophy, our only trophy in, in 40 odd years, 43 years. Uh, I, I did a video yesterday with Frank McAvenny. I'll put a little insert of it up uh, tomorrow. And, and again, it's very, look, Dave, uh, Frank McAvenny is, is quite frustrated with a brand of football under David Moyes. And I just think it's really hard if you are not a West Ham fan. It's, it's hard to explain it, and it's hard to explain it fully, the frustrations. Because I think if I was just watching, and I was watching West Ham on <laughs> Match of the Day, I'd be thinking, what the hell is the problem here? What's the problem with this slot? And I do wonder, and it got me sort of wondering, what under what circumstances would... Well, I'm going to say you, because I'm asking you the question, because it, it's your comment section here. But when I was thinking about it, you know, under what circumstances would you consider retaining David Moyes? Under what circumstances would I consider it to be OK uh, for David Moyes not to have been offered a contract? Now, the, the thing uh, to be offered a contract at the end of the season, there were so many questions that were asked. One of them that one of them I just I just couldn't answer because it's not for me to answer. Why hasn't David Moyes been offered a new contract yet? Well, I suspect they're lining up someone else. I really do. Uh, however, at what point does David Moyes? Does a new guy not come in and does David Moyes just get a new deal? And what would be acceptable to you if it were to happen? Is it under no circumstances? There was a poll. We, we, we did some of the poll here. A um, lot of websites all got together and, and did a poll a couple of months ago, maybe a month ago. I, I can't even remember, but you can, you can have a look yourself. You can check yourself. And it was about 36% wanted David Moyes to stay. It, it was a li little over a third, basically. Um... And even then, that, that was when I felt people were at their sort of most frustrated with Moyes. I have a feeling that that number will be higher now. And I don't know. I have no way of knowing. But if somebody told me now that that number was, was now 43% to pluck a number out of thin air, that wouldn't surprise me at all. And I think, what I think definitely does it, is David Moyes winning a trophy. If David Moyes, if David Moyes wins back-to-back -back trophies, there is no way that you cannot retain him. Even if you don't like the football at all, even if you want him gone. No one can argue. I, I think, honestly, you can make the points. But I think even Tim Steiton, who may, I, I'm not suggesting that I know for a fact that Tim Steiton wants him out. But even, you know, even Tim Stryker, I don't think anyone could make the case to Sullivan to say we need to get rid of this guy. Now, I'm not even suggesting he can win another trophy this season. So I think possibly not. But, uh, you know, it, we'll, we'll find out a lot more, won't we, in the next couple of days in terms of the, uh, the Carabao Cup. But then I start looking at it and I start thinking, well, hold on, what else would it take? And I think qualifying for Europe again. So here's a scenario for you, and you don't have to answer this, but I would be interested. And if you want to twist it up yourself and make your own set of criteria and tell me what it would take. In fact, let's do it that way. Yeah, you let me know what it would take for you to let David Moyes stay. Maybe you just, you're just offering one now. Maybe you would, and that's fine. And there's no right or wrong answer here. Everyone's got, everyone's got their own opinion on it. But here's, how, here's what I think. This, this is what I think the circumstances where David Moyes stays. I think if David Moyes gets to, let's say, quarter-final, let's say quarter-final in the Europa League, and we qualify for Europe again next season, I think that's it. I, I really do. I really, really do. Now, qualification for Europe could mean something else. Above that, it may well be that he does better. He does better than that quarter-final. Maybe that he wins it, and that's how we qualify for Europe. I mean, that, that would definitely get it. There's no doubt about it. Back-to-back -back European trophies definitely, definitely gets it. But I do. And, and I've got to be honest with you, I wouldn't be able to argue with that. And I can't deny that when we play badly, and Moyes, we see Moyes at his worst, when, when sort of Moyes ball, if you want to call it that, which I know is an insulting term, but when Moyes ball doesn't work, I get very, very frustrated with him. And, and I want to look at something else. I want to watch something else. And I wonder why he can't get the best out of these wonderful players uh, that we have. However, however, 
I do look at it and I do think if he can manage to do that, I would find that very, very hard to argue against. At the end of the day, you know, I support West Ham. I'm a West Ham fan. I've supported West Ham when we've had far worse teams than the one we've got at the moment. And worse managers than David Moyes. Yeah, absolutely. West Ham have had many worse managers than David Moyes, by the way. Uh, well, there's only been one other trophy win that I can ever remember, and that was the FA Cup in 1980, and I barely remember that. So he's delivered the only thing that realistically that I can remember. And he's in a good little streak at the moment. I know it's only two games. And I do think there's a... I, I don't like this whole thing where when he does, when he does anything right, it's someone else gets the credit. When, when he does anything right, it's Heitinger. And West Ham get it wrong. It's not Heitinger then. It's not Heitinger then. Then it's Moyes. It's always been the way. It, it, you can say Heitinger now. Last season it was Warburton. Before that it was Irvine. Uh, there was a thing with Nottingham Forest where it was um, Kevin Nolan. You get this thing, don't you? Where, where Moyes does something right, it's someone else. Whenever the team do poorly, then it's David Moyes. The team rallies after half time. The, the, the squad have taken control in the dressing room. I hate that. I, I, I hate that. I, I think David Moyes is is responsible. We, we know, funny enough, we know what happens with managers. We've seen it with Alan Kirbishley. When Alan Kirbishley had massive interference, he, he walked. Because these managers have it put into their contracts that they can do that. And I doubt Moyes is any different. David Moyes is responsible when we play crap. And Dave Moyes is responsible when we play well. And I've no doubt between now and the end of the season, we're going to play crap again. Not sure we'll get another 5-0 Tonkin. But I do think we'll play crap again and we will get a hide in from somebody. But I also think we'll play well again. And it's looking like we're going to be, we're going to be top half of the table. Because it ain't bad. If I look at the Premier League now... 27 points after 17 games is not bad at all. So I'm pretty confident we're going to be top 10. And if coefficient works out, then it may well be that European places go to top 8. In which case, we're in with a shout. If we establish that we are going to be top 10, then it's not beyond the realms of possibility that we're going to be in that top 8. And therein lies the question. If we finish... European qualification again, will that be good enough for David Moyes to keep his job? More importantly, what will be the criteria for you in which David Moyes keeps his job? I'll read all the comments. Let me know below. I'm going to be really interested in reading them.